<sighs> nice day out. <laughs> it's actually one of the first nice days that we've had since the last time that we had snow. And I think this is it. I don't think we have any more snow until late fall. The unfortunate part is the weather is much nicer now, but for the next several days it's supposed to be rainy. And so sometimes that can be an easy way to think like, okay, well, if it's raining out, I'm not gonna be able to go out and take any pictures. The way that I like to look at it is it's an opportunity. Maybe there's something we can do with the rain that we couldn't do on a normal day. Like maybe we can use the rain to our advantage. The other day, Facebook reminded me that I did this photo back in 2011 where I had three different images that I brought together. There were two in the background and then one in the foreground. The two in the background were basically the same shot, but taken several hours apart. One was in the daytime and then one was in the nighttime. And since they were taken on a tripod in the exact same location, you can put one over top of the other and wherever you erase one, the lines match up from the one below it in Photoshop. So you can have daytime everywhere and then have a part of the image be nighttime. It's kind of cool, right? So there's a lot of things you could do with this. You could put shapes in of nighttime. You could have it be a gradient where like it starts on daytime on one side of the picture and then moves to nighttime on the other. Or you could even like put nighttime within an object. You could have a picture frame where it's nighttime or you could have anything. What I chose to do is I had a friend that I photographed in studio wearing a black leather jacket and then with Photoshop put her into the background in daytime and then anywhere that her black jacket was, I took the black out and I made it nighttime. So to make it obvious that it's a jacket, I, I left little details like not just the shape but I left like extra contrast around the arms and around the folds and I painted in all the detail where the zipper was and that just sort of keeps it looking like a jacket, but upon a closer look, like when, when the viewer goes in and really looks at it, you can tell that it's actually nighttime. Wouldn't it be cool if there was somebody who was outside in the rain with an umbrella, and in the umbrella, it was nice weather. I think we're onto something. I'm gonna draw out what I'm thinking, just a rough copy, so like, horizon line, maybe like buildings. This is really bad. Rain coming down. And then a person with an umbrella. I'm picturing kind of like with their shoulder turned, their coats, there'd be rain everywhere, and puddles on the ground. And then here's the umbrella and it'll be daytime. I think this is gonna be a really fun opportunity to bring like several images together and just kind of like play around in Photoshop a bit. Let's get to it. So when you think you've found a spot that you wanna shoot in, there's a couple of things that you have to make sure don't change between your first image and your last image. Ideally, you'd leave a tripod set up so that the camera doesn't change at all between shots. But since we're actually shooting like one today and then one another day when it's rainy out, I'm gonna have to leave the spot completely, not leave a tripod or anything. So you have to make sure that you have marked it or figured out exactly what you're shooting in advance. Sometimes it's finding an object that you can clamp your camera set up too. And then sometimes it's finding a marking on the sidewalk or leaving a marking on the sidewalk and then setting your tripod at a certain height at that very spot. And then the last thing that you can do, take a picture on your phone and then use an app that'll let you use an onion skin. An onion skin is when you can take an image, make it see-through and have it show up transparently over the camera. And then you can go and find the exact position that you shot that last shot from, and then that's where you need to set your camera up to. So for today's image, I'm going to be using the Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4 art series lens. What's great about this is that no matter when you use it, it's always gonna be set to the exact same focal length. So when you're matching up the shots, 
One's not gonna be zoomed in more than the other. Jesus, bright. <laughs> All right, so. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for joining me on the first Sips Photo Tips video. This is gonna be a series and I'm going to be creating all kinds of exciting images and showing you every step of how I make them. Uh, if that interests you, please feel free to hit like and subscribe and also check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, yeah, that's it. See ya. Another thing that you wanna do when you're looking for a spot to take your background image, you wanna make sure that you find a spot that shows more than just a flat wall or like the ground around you. You want to find a spot that shows a lot of detail. So when you put the umbrella in this case or whatever that's gonna bring the two worlds together, you want to have area to play with that shows enough detail to make it obvious that the images are different. So in this case, this shot right here, this is great because you can see down the street. And so that gives all this area that you can see sunlight. In the rain picture, you'll be able to see all this area with the rain. You'll be able to see some haze in the distance as well as puddles all the way down the street. If you're focused on a smaller space or just a wall, it's not gonna have as much impact because it doesn't have as much to show that it's sunny or that it's rainy like this does. So although I'm not gonna shoot with the tripod in this image, I'm gonna use it to position the camera. So at the moment, I have the tripod two full lengths up. I guess three, but it's only two extensions up. And I'm putting it right over this crack. And so I'm gonna put the camera right here and move around. I'm gonna pivot on this point. Perfect. So this is exactly where I'm gonna put the camera tomorrow or whenever it's rainy. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna shoot from the exact same position. All right, so here I am on day two. It's raining outside just like we wanted. I've got my Onion Skin app that I was talking about all set up and I'm ready to find the exact same spot that I shot yesterday when it was nice and sunny out, but I'm gonna shoot it today now that it's raining. So as you can see here, I've got yesterday's picture all ghostly and we're back at the same location. So I've grabbed my tripod now and I'm walking it back to the spot. So here it is in roughly the same position. I'm just going to make sure everything syncs up nice. Just about. Right about here. It'll look better through the, the camera lens, but it looks like everything's just about perfect right there. take a few photos good I'm on 35 mil just like yesterday good I'm gonna take more than I need just to make sure wait for a car to get out of the way perfect Yeah, it looks good. All right. It's too bad it's not raining a little heavier, but we can fix that later. All right, so now that we've shot the two background pictures outside, we're ready to shoot the foreground picture. So because we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic at the moment, I have nobody to shoot other than myself. So it's gonna be me posing. I'm gonna be posing with the umbrella, which I've got right here. I've got a very classic looking umbrella. Uh, it's got the, the loop at the bottom and the point at the top. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be posing with it here in the studio. So just like outside, I've got the same camera set up. I've got the Canon 6D Mark II. And I've got the 35 millimeter focal length Sigma lens that I was using outside as well. So since it's the same focal length, it should be pretty easy to put the pictures together and have them look right. It's shot on the same angle as outside and I've got the tripod set to two full extensions, just like we did outside as well. 
Now all we really have to do is match the lighting. I'm using a strobe. It's the Paul Buff B800 strobe light. I have a PLM unit on it, which stands for Parabolic Light Modifier. And so it's a big umbrella that's silver on the inside. The flash shoots into it, bounces off the silver, and then gives this big light. And then I've got a diffusion stock, which is this big white thing that you see that makes the light nice and soft. And then I've also got a Godox AD200 flash right here. And so it is shooting through something similar. This is a big um, Octobox that I've got, collapsible. And yeah, so the, the light bounces around in here, goes through the diffusion stock for nice soft light, just like the other one. And I have it bouncing off of the door and this product backdrop right here. And so the two of these will be the backup light. So main light source right here, which is the upper camera left, just like the sky was when we shot the backgrounds. Um, so then the lighting will match. And then just so it's not like a total light drop off and we have some detail on the umbrella, I've got this flash filling in that space. <laughs> I'm shooting with the Canon 6D Mark II and it has a setting called interval timer. So I'm switching that to enable and it's set to take a picture every four seconds. I'm gonna start that and I'm gonna do a few poses. <laughs> it's always weird smiling when you're alone. But uh, <laughs> the joys of a self-portrait photographer. <laughs> That's probably good. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Oh, there's some cool ones in there. I'm gonna go into the shower and wet the umbrella a little bit and then come back and take a few more pictures with rain droplets on. Gonna start this taking pictures. Okay, wet umbrella coming through. It's okay for me to be dry because the umbrella keeps me dry. Sometimes if I make a really big smile and then bring it down, it's easy to uh, make it look more natural. So if I do that, then it's like you just smiled really big or laughed and then it fades. All right, let's see what I got. Finally, we can kick back, relax, and Photoshop. As you can see here, I've loaded the photos into two separate folders, one for the sunny pictures and one for the rain, and one for the little boy who lives down the... Oh, never mind. I've gone ahead and made my selections and brought them into Adobe Camera Raw. I'm adjusting the rainy pictures to make the lighting as flat as possible and adjusting the color balance to make them look a little bit more gloomy and blue. And for the sunny picture, I want to make it look as bright and colorful as possible so it stands out from the gloomy background. You're probably wondering why there are two rainy pictures. It's because somebody threw a pail onto the fire escape mid photo shoot from the kitchen on the other side of the wall. I'm using the other rainy photo to cover up the space that the pail takes up. So that way I can use the image that I want without having the pail on the fire escape. Now that I've perfected the rainy shot, I've gone ahead and aligned both images so everything matches up. Now it gets interesting. I'm about to add the photo of me holding the umbrella. After looking through my options, I've narrowed it down to this shot. I like that you can see the top and the bottom of the umbrella and my pose doesn't look too forced. 
I'm processing it in a similar way to the rainy picture. Low contrast and cooler tones. Now that I've opened it up in Photoshop, I'm going to clean up the image a little. And now it's time to use the selection tools to cut me out. After removing the background, I can see that the umbrella is reflecting some of the ugly yellow tones from my rental apartment walls, so we'll just paint that out. Choose the paintbrush and set the color to black. Now set the blending mode of the paintbrush to color mode. Now when you paint over the umbrella, it'll get rid of the yellow tone. Now if you look down to my arm, you can see that it is quite a bit lighter than the rest of the image. This is lens flare from our main light that was firing into my lens during the shoot. We will use the burn tool set to midtones and shadows to carefully darken the space to match the rest of the image. Note that sometimes the dodging and burning can mess with the saturation. Here I'm using the sponge tool set to desaturate to make this area match the rest of the image. Finally, I'm ready to put myself into the rainy background. I've settled on this positioning so that the umbrella shows off the light post, sky, fire escape, and wall. This gives us a great variety of detail to show the differences between the backgrounds. Now we are going to select me out from the umbrella so that we can introduce the sunny image without covering up my face. Now that I've carefully separated my bust from the umbrella, I'll drag the layer mask over to our sunny layer. Oops! I forgot to paint out my lower torso. Don't want that. This is starting to feel good, but you can't really tell what the umbrella is. So I've made the original image somewhat transparent and I'm tracing all the struts, points, and other details to make it more obvious that it's an umbrella. I'm also making the bottom a little less transparent than the top, and vignetting the edges to make it look more three-dimensional. If you're familiar with my work, you already know that I like to add depth to my images by adding haze to the atmosphere. I'll be focusing on the background for a while to dodge the shadows and midtones to make the scene get lighter and less contrasty the further it goes back. Now you can really see a separation between the umbrella and the dark and gloomy background. The only thing is, it's still hard to tell that it's raining. I've got just the solution for that. I went out and clipped a black backdrop to my porch and photographed it from my driveway while it was raining. It was super windy and not raining as hard as I would have liked. I experimented with shooting an available light at first, then I introduced a flash to try to capture the illuminated droplets. I used my hand to shield the camera lens from the flash to avoid getting flare. While there is no one photo that turned out perfect, I did get several shots where parts of them turned out really good. So I took all the best pieces and organized them into one big image in a new Photoshop project. After I had all the pieces placed, I erased the drops that stood out so that way it wouldn't be obvious if they appeared more than once. Then I duplicated, flipped, and rotated it to make the screen more populated. The last step is to flatten all the rain layers and make sure that the dark area is pure black. I achieved this by adjusting the levels. Now I'm ready to bring this file into our main image to illustrate rain into our scene. Since the rain shows up as white on the black background, I set the layer blend mode to screen, so that way the black background appears as transparent. Right now it almost looks more like snow than rain, which we do not want. So I'm going to head up to the filter menu and select motion blur for our droplets. In this panel, you can select how much blur you want and the direction it's moving in. This looks good, but we need more. A lot more. The further back we put it, I'm going to make it smaller and make it take up a smaller space. So if it's moving down the street, the smaller droplets will only appear down the street and not close up. Now that the image is almost complete, I'm realizing there's a few things that I don't want in the scene. Like on the light post, I don't really like the signage or the poles sticking out from the side. I also noticed the pocket on my jacket doesn't look quite right, so I had to fix that now too. Finally, we've pretty much finished the image. All that's left is cleaning up anything small we may have missed earlier, as well as tweaking the color to pack the most punch. And now I present to you the final image, Sunny Disposition.